all he had to do was chump block the shaman. Maybe he has removal here. And that's why he blocked the other one. That would be pretty big brained of him. No, we get it. That's awesome. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today we have another free to play deck for you guys. This is a gruel build with a little bit of blue. Don't worry about that. We're not using any blue in our land because everything is green uh, as a combo color. So again, this deck contains zero rares, zero mythics. We're going to talk about the deck list. We're going to get into some strategy, a little bit of a closing word before we get into some gameplay. And then we're going to break down how you can potentially upgrade this deck if you want to. So thanks for watching. Stick tuned. Tap that like button. Now let's get into the build. Our deck starts off pretty light. We have only four one drops, Boreal Grazer, zero strength, three toughness, with reach, so it's a nice blocker at least. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you get to put an additional land from your hand into the battlefield tapped. So a nice little ramp engine there for us. We also only have one two drop, which is unfortunate, but you'll see. Put a one one counter on target creature you control, and that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So a little bit of removal for flyers, planeswalkers, and other creatures that have really good abilities that you just absolutely have to get rid of. Rum Gully the Generous. This is a 3-3, and each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it. So who doesn't love that? Warden of the Chained. This is the card we built the deck around. It's a 4-4 with Trample, and it cannot attack unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater. We have three copies of Rhythm of the Wild. It's an enchantment. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Non-token creatures you control have Riot. Iora Behemoth Beckner. This is our first and only Planeswalker of the deck. He comes into the battlefield with seven loyalty counters on her. She has a minus one on tap target permanent. And then her static ability, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Moving on to our four drops. We have four copies of Rampant Smarcher. <laughs> we have four copies of Rampart Smasher. This is a 5-5 five, five giant, and he can only be blocked by creatures that are not knights or walls. Sunder Shaman. This is another giant for 5-5. Five, five. He cannot be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever it deals damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Thunderous Snapper. Not a giant, but a giant turtle nonetheless. Whenever you cast a spell with converted mana cost 5 or greater, draw a card. He's 4-4. Four, four. We have Nihilus Forerunner. This is our one and only 5 drop. It has Trample. It's 5-3, and other creatures you control have Trample. We have 10 mountains, 10 forests, and four rugged highlands. That's the deck breakdown. Let's get into a little bit of the strategy. The strategy is overall very, very simple. We want a deck with plenty of land, ideally two to three, and an arboreal grazer. The rest can flow off that in any general direction. Most important thing is that you get to your turn three play on turn two. That's the first objective, right? So that includes having the grazer in your hand plus two lands. So you play the land, ideally a forest, obviously, and you get that second land in play. Then on your second turn, you play your third land. You could risk the biscuit and go for the draw if you don't have it, but it'd be nice to just have it in your hand so you have that confirmed draw. And then you're lacing in one of your three drops, whether it be Rhythm of the Wild, Rum Gully, or Kyora. I like Kyora because she's the draw engine right away. But again, if you get that Rhythm of the Wild out so your creatures have haste, that's okay too. And again, Grum Gully, if you have other creatures, Without those other two cards, that's going to be your next best option. And then Warden of the Chain is our least favorite. But again, it's a good creature. We'll get that out there eventually. Moving on to our next turn, we're doing any of the above. Again, just filling out those things that we didn't get to do. And again, we could also, if he has uh, some artifacts or enchantments we want to destroy, we get our Shaman out there so he can attack and get those dead. Um, if it's just an empty field and you can smash home, get your Smasher there because you're just activating your draw off your Beckoner probably. Or if you're looking to play the long con and you need to draw and you don't have your Kyora out, get your Snapper out, and then that's going to give you the option to draw when Forerunner enters the battlefield. So the main objective is to ramp into your turn three, get set up, take turns three, turn four, and possibly turn five to get that field presence really, really big, and then drop a Forerunner. All your guys have Trample. You should be able, you should be able to just smash home without any resistance. So again, the strategy overall is very, very simple. Ramp up. Throw your general mid-range squad, throw Trample on, and then clean up the field along with his health points. So that was our deck strategy. 
Now, a couple closing thoughts on the deck. This might not be the world's greatest deck because Shattered the Sky is so prevalent in the meta right now. Ugh. And with that all being said, be sure to check us out on Twitch live every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. If you want to join the live conversation, maybe help us build some decks. We're always looking to talk to our audience there. You can also jump in the Discord if you want to continue this conversation. Maybe you have some questions about the deck. And then again, please, it would be mean the world to me if you gave it a like, comment, and subscribe. Shared it to your friends. All that lovely stuff. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into some gameplay. And then we're going to talk about some deck upgrades. All right, you guys. Red Sky in morning. Sailors take morning. Red Sky at night. Sailors delight. I'd say Red Sky all the time in the current meta. Like, how do you not run into Shattered Sky? Our opponent's taking a mulligan. It's not the worst. Pretty sure he can mulligan down to three and beat us with this deck. I don't have high hopes for it. Especially when everybody and their mom's playing Lord's Control. It's like, give it up, you guys. We will all play Thought Distortion if you don't stop. Real talk. I'm going to make a note of that. I'm making a thought. Oh, this could be Asper. Maybe I'll, I'll let off the rage pedal for a second. Let's get this out. That's going to start that draw engine, which is really good for us. That's our turn. All right, we're getting lucky enough to continue to pull land. It lands, we get the draw. Cool, he's gonna immediately remove it, whatever. It can't attack alone anyway, so go for it. He lets it slide. It's allowable. Moving. We're taking the slow route here. At least we know he's got more removal. He's probably got counters. Right, let's just keep drawing cards, playing things he needs to get rid of. Empty his hands, right? Because he's using a card every time, whereas we are using one, but then also replenishing it. So, it's not the worst. He has a replenishment as well. That's, that's great. Let's play our Shaman. That's what it's all about, you guys. It's destroying his enchantments. We don't really need a defender. We'll just pass. Shattered Sky gets to take his uh, acuity back. Deals with our threat. Mm, just a general mortify. It's a good call. Keep pushing our draw. Another shaman is really nice. We can push up to three here. Nature flows with bigger. Should have done our Grom Gully first. That's on us, but I have a feeling it's not going to matter. There it is. Loving it. We do get the draw, though. Well, that's always nice. And we just get to legitimately restart this relentless pursuit of our opponent's health points. And our turn here, we're keeping a nice full hand, which is a big part of the game. Not letting your opponent drain you out.
He's got a nice thick hand though as well. Okay, played his acuity. He must have another drop here. Some sort of removal on our rampart, I'm assuming. Yes, just returning it to our hand. That's hot. Let's make use of it. He's gonna need another Shatter Sky. Alright, we had another draw here. Loving it. 10 on the field for next turn, plus we can threaten an enchantment if he plays it. So he needs to legitimately remove our Sunder Shaman before he continues with his Dovin's Acuity. He has three more Shattered's guys, which are plenty of Elspeths as well. He is brave. He must have something. Or he's counting on the draw. That would be incredible. Oh, he's targeting it. No! Yes! What a guy! We have 36 cards left, plenty of room to continue drawing. He needs another Shattered Sky here. Hit for five, I'm liking that. We could drop something for three if we wanted. But we have him for 15 next turn, so why would we? Um, that would just give him more opportunity to win the game with the Shattered Sky. Our ambushes don't really do much here until he plays a Planeswalker. All right, Cutie in the house. Shatter Sky is available. Omit. How does he not have it? You know what I mean. Cover your eyes. Hey man, I'm okay if he just single targets us. Right, we're heading for 10 next turn. Where's our haste at, you guys? We also don't really want to overextend here again. Throw some grazers out, why not? They're not gonna do any good in our hand later. Anyways, we have plenty of land. Shattered Sky or bust? We're just riders, so no Shattered Sky. Really? I didn't want to go too wide, but we can easily Darmer's ambush any creatures he plays. Trying to keep a lot of our creatures in our hand in case he does wipe the field. That doesn't end a game for us. We still have juice to continue on, All right? Both have power four greater, which activate our Kyora's draw engine and should basically kickstart our whole game again. He's up to six, he's got three mana. Brazen Borrower on our Smasher. Yeah, bummer. 
Kind of is what it is. Can't take no for an answer, though. That's why we have two copies. And it looks like that's going to be game. Yes! Opponent goes first. This is not really a good start for us in any way. So we're going to toss it. Keeping this, at least we have Rhythm of the Wild. That's really going to help us. Let's drop our Ambush. Keeping our Rampart Smasher. If we draw a Forest, that would be cool. Kickstart this whole equation. Negative. We're going slow. It's Cat Oven. Hopefully it ends at that. It doesn't go straight into a Jund Mayhem Devil situation. Sucks. Well, there's Trail of Chromes, baby. No. Let's destroy those ovens. There we go. Just getting that extra land in the field there. He's going to do his cat again. Probably going to rhythm next turn. Just so we have haste for the latter parts of the game. That's really going to set us up for a win. It's going to be a little slow, but this is going to be a slow match. He's really going for it. He is not afraid to play this cat on us. I'm tempted to go big, but let's settle down. He's a return to nature. We're gonna just like leave. <laughs> he's giving us a nice, like it affects him somehow. Hopefully it does, or he's just laughing in his chair like a mad villain. We're playing our Smasher first, because our Warren won't be able to attack by himself, but he can come out the second turn with haste. We're already going to be down to 14 with this dang tuned cat. He's played nothing else but this cat, you guys. This is incredible. Obviously, he can chump block us here. And because of that, we just put a token on him. Right, until we pull out Trample, we can't really attack into the cat um, because when blockers are declared, then he'll sacrifice it and our damage won't go through unless we get Trample. This is good. No way, he has to block the Shaman instead. This is Artifact or Enchantment. He's going to be so upset when we destroy his oven. All he had to do was chump block the Shaman. Maybe he has removal here. And that's why he blocked the other one. That would be pretty big brained of him. No, we get it. That's awesome. That is awesome.
And typically, probably the only reason we got that through is because he's not seen a lot of Thundering Shaman in the meta. So sometimes you get uh, a little bit of a head start or leeway by using the anti or off meta decks. I mean, we're down to 12. We got to get things going. He's got that draw engine as well. This is his turn here, so he's going to be tapped out. Ooh, they're actually bronzed on. nice. He does need to chump lock my shaman this time. That allows us in for 11. He doesn't chomp block it because he assumes it has trample. Um, so, like, we're fine with that. He could have chomp locked it. Or, no, he couldn't because his oven was tapped because we destroyed the other. Aha! Incredible. So, he's down to 12. We've caught up on life. He pulled a goose, which is, like, not really that great. We have Domri's ambush on hand. If we draw a land, we can ambush and use our warden. Maybe that's lethal. I hope so. All right, you guys. He's really trying to solve the issue here. His best bet would be th thrashing Brodded on, destroy Rhythm of the Wild. But again, that might not be a good situation. Massacre Girl does nothing. Good game, you guys. Um, I think he kind of did the math wrong on that. Oh, nice. And he can start it off by sacrificing it. That's actually not something I've seen. That's really cool. So we're down to 10. But back up. Let's go in with another haste. Pretty sure down to nine, but this is going to be OK. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So that is two games in a row. Diamond rank, you guys. That's as good as you get with a free-to-play deck. All right, you guys. Let me know what you thought about the deck in the comments below. Let's talk about some upgrades before we close this video out. Obviously, I like things like Pelt Collector that can get stronger. That's amazing. And then we have other draw engines like Yalia of the Endless Dance. This just works in a little bit of that early game, so we're not relying on the Arboreal Grazer Ramp because obviously sometimes that just empties your hand if you don't have the draw engine or if he deals with any of your threats then you're just in for a bad time. So we've reorganized the beginning of the deck just to make the curve up much, much more friendly. And then we've dropped our Warden in lieu of the Spellbreaker. It's basically the same card, plus it has Hexproof, and uh, yeah, it can always attack, which is really, really good. So those are our main changes. Obviously, we've added our Rare Lands as well, as should you. So Pelt Collector, Gallia of the Endless Dance, Gruel Spellbreaker, that is our deck, you guys. Thanks for watching so much. I appreciate your attention and uh, everybody who's been trying to help build the stream and uh, get the quality as high as you can. If you have any suggestions, please hit me up in Discord. I would be so grateful. With that all being said, we're live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. Like I said, you can join the Discord if you have any other comments or concerns. Join our Cinnamon Bowl, which is this month's Brawl Tournament, which takes place every month on the last weekend of every month. So be sure to join those as well. Free entry with cash prizes, so nothing to lose out on there. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. If you enjoyed today's footage, be sure to check out our Guys for Beginners playlist along with our Greatest Hit playlist. Both of these are chocked full of hours of quality content. You can also subscribe to the channel for your chance to win up to 500,000 gems. And most importantly, share all of this with your friends.